This might be the future of nuclear energy, but it doesn't look anything like the past. Instead of massive concrete domes and billion-dollar delays, picture compact power plants the size of a shipping container delivered by truck and quietly supporting entire towns. These are small modular reactors, an innovation that is reshaping how we think about nuclear power. At a time when wind and solar dominate headlines, SMRs are stepping forward with bold claims of safety, speed, and affordability. But are they too good to be true? From passive cooling to floating power stations, this story dives into the technology that could redefine clean energy forever. Rethinking Nuclear in a Renewable Age As solar panels and wind turbines rise across landscapes, the word nuclear often feels like a relic of another era, haunted by mushroom clouds and disaster headlines. Yet beneath the fear lies a quiet truth. Nuclear energy is one of the most stable, carbon-free sources ever developed. France, Slovakia, and Ukraine still rely on nuclear power to power their cities. While the global share of electricity from nuclear power has dipped from 17.7% in 1996 to just 10.3% in 2019. But why? It's not because nuclear doesn't work, it's because large-scale nuclear plants are slow and costly to build. Solar and wind are cheaper and quicker to install, making them the go-to choice in a fast-moving energy transition. Meanwhile, the nuclear industry is stuck fighting against outdated perceptions and modern-day logistical nightmares. Disasters like Fukushima didn't just shake buildings, they shook public trust. But what if nuclear energy could reinvent itself? What if there were a version small enough to ship, quick to install, and safe enough to earn back confidence? Enter the era of small modular reactors, a concept that promises to make nuclear not just relevant again, but vital. The rise of small modular reactors. Imagine a nuclear reactor small enough to be transported by truck, assembled like Lego blocks, and tucked into remote regions where large plants could never fit. That's the vision behind small modular reactors, or SMRs. Unlike their colossal predecessors, which can take up to a decade to build, SMRs are compact factory-built systems designed for rapid deployment. Each unit generally generates up to 300 megablurs of power, about a third or less of a standard reactor. Their real strength lies in modularity. A utility could install one to start and add more over time as demand increases, reducing upfront costs and risks. New Scale Power is a leader in this space, designing 60 Mbr modules that can be combined to form a 720 Mbr plant. These SMRs occupy just 1% of the space of traditional plants, yet offer incredible adaptability. They're even being considered for hybrid setups alongside solar and wind, offering a constant backbone of power. More than just a downsized version of old technology, SMRs aim to redefine how we think about nuclear power, agile or efficient, and more responsive to the decentralized grid of the future. Cost, construction, and competition. Building a nuclear power plant has always been a financial gamble. One delay, one design flaw, and costs can skyrocket. Traditional plants routinely blow past budgets and timelines, with some ballooning to over $28 billion. In contrast, SMRs aim to be a budget-conscious alternative. New scale 720 MW plant is expected to cost around $3 billion, roughly 20% cheaper per megawatt than conventional units. Their factory-built design eliminates much of the unpredictable on-site construction work, making them attractive to investors wary of long delays. And in terms of timing, these reactors can be deployed within a few years, rather than the better part of a decade. Yet even at lower costs, SMRs must compete with natural gas and renewables. In 2019, the levelized cost of energy, LCOE, from nuclear hovered at $155 mWh, compared to just 40 for solar. SMRs hope to cut that figure closer to $100 mWh or less. However, without mass production and proven operation, many investors still hesitate. The real challenge? Proving SMRs can scale safely and affordably, 
while surviving in an energy market that rewards speed and cost above all else. Safety and the promise of passive systems. When people hear nuclear, they worry about meltdowns. Chernobyl, Fukushima, images that scarred the public imagination. Traditional reactors rely on active safety systems, external electricity, backup generators, human operators. If those systems fail, disaster follows. SMRs offer a radically different approach. Many are designed with passive safety in mind, systems that function without outside help. New Scale's reactor, for example, uses natural convection to circulate water, cooling the core without the need for pumps or power. If temperatures rise too much, a built-in reservoir absorbs the heat, and steam is automatically vented and recondensed into water. No operator intervention, no external grid, it's a self-contained loop of protection. Some SMRs, like the 5 MW micromodular reactor from UltraSafe Nuclear, are designed to go 20 years without refueling. No moving parts, minimal maintenance. By minimizing complexity, they reduce points of failure. But passive safety isn't just a technical fix, it's a psychological one. It shows that nuclear doesn't have to be dangerous. With smart design, reactors can protect themselves. And in a world skeptical of nuclear's past, that change might just be the most important innovation of all. New players, new designs. Across the globe, innovators are racing to make SMRs a commercial reality. In the United States, companies like Terra Power, X Energy, and GE Hitachi are pushing forward with novel designs. New Scale may be leading the charge, but they're far from alone. In China, the China National Nuclear Corporation began building its own 125 MW SMR in 2019. Canada isn't far behind either, with Arki Nuclear developing a 100 MW sodium-cooled design with 20-year fuel cycles. Meanwhile, terrestrial energy is blending existing technologies to create an advanced molten salt reactor. Even Russia has joined the movement, with a floating SMR plant called Academic Lomonosov, already operational and supplying power to remote communities in the Arctic. These designs aren't identical, but they share a vision. Decentralized, safe, and long-lasting nuclear power that can thrive where traditional plants cannot. Each design represents not just engineering evolution, but a bet that nuclear's future lies not in going bigger, but in going smarter. The boron problem and licensing delays even the most promising technologies face growing pains, and SMRs are no exception. Regulatory approval has become one of the biggest roadblocks. New Scale's reactor design, while revolutionary, has encountered tough scrutiny over safety. One specific concern involves the boron-laced water that circulates through the core to control the reaction. During emergency cooling, steam is released and later recondensed, but critics worry the returning water could be boron deficient. Without enough boron, the reactor might not properly shut down in a crisis. It's a small chemical detail with massive implications. Licensing agencies like the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, NRC, are being thorough, but the delays add time and uncertainty. SMRs are supposed to be faster and easier to deploy but no amount of innovation can bypass the need for rigorous safety certification. Until these concerns are resolved and trust is earned, the timeline for mass deployment remains uncertain. The lesson here is clear. Engineering a breakthrough is one thing, getting it approved is another. Economy of scale and cost challenges. While SMRs are cheaper than traditional nuclear projects, they still struggle to compete head-to-head -head with natural gas. The economy of scale that makes large reactors cost-efficient don't apply to smaller units unless they're built in large numbers. A 1.6 GDW reactor spreads its fixed costs over a massive output, but an SMR with just 100 MW dollars doesn't enjoy that same advantage. Even if their LCOE drops below 100 dollars Meldobrush, many estimates still show natural gas beating them on price at around 45,000 million dollars mush. And unless SMRs can be manufactured at scale like commercial airliners or smartphones, prices will remain stubbornly high. Investors want returns, utilities want affordability, 
and SMRs have to deliver both while proving long-term viability. Until production ramps up significantly, the cost gap will be a tough hurdle. The waste that won't go away. Despite their compact size and clever engineering, SMRs haven't solved nuclear's biggest problem, radioactive waste. Most SMRs still rely on pressurized water designs, which means they generate the same long-lived nuclear byproducts as traditional reactors. Waste that remains dangerous for hundreds of thousands of years. No country has a fully operational permanent storage facility for such waste. Critics like Dr. Gordon Edwards emphasize this unresolved burden. Even with reduced fuel usage and longer refueling cycles, the byproduct challenge persists. And regulators, including the IAEA, stress that any long-term SMR strategy must include robust waste management plans. Without one, this promising technology may struggle to shake the shadow of its predecessors. Small modular reactors offer a vision of nuclear energy that's cleaner, smaller, and smarter. But with questions around licensing, costs, and waste still unresolved, they walk a fine line between hope and hype. If these compact powerhouses can deliver on their promises, they could play a vital role in balancing our renewable future. If not, they risk becoming another missed opportunity in the fight for carbon-free power. Either way, SMRs demand attention, not just for what they are, but for what they could become. The energy revolution isn't just about going green, it's about getting it right. And this might be the turning point.